Hello everyone, White Witch 110 here. In case you can't guess, tonight's facts are regarding the Tulip Festival. These photos Hubby and I took in 2017, and they were taken in the evening, which we usually don't do. We usually go during the day, but this was after work. We had taken our cameras with us and got some really nice shots. Going during the week is actually a plus because you don't have the large crowds that you would have on the weekend when the bus loads come in. So I'll just show you some of them here. Now the facts. In 1945, 100,000 tulip bulbs were sent to Ottawa in gratitude for sheltering Queen Juliana and her family during World War II in the Netherlands. It is claimed to be the world's largest tulip festival. There are over a million tulips on display. Over 650,000 visitors arrive in Ottawa for this event. This year it will be held from May 8th to the 18th, which is Victoria Day weekend. There are displays throughout the city, but Dow's Lake is the most popular spot. 300,000 tulips are planted along the Rideau Canal. You will find authentic art pieces, cultural shows, history, and food. It is a true family outing. And there is also, at Lansdowne Park, artisans selling their bags, their photos, their jewelry, their paintings, everything tulips. It has been held as a tulip festival since 1953. In 1943, Princess Marguerite was born at the Ottawa Civic Hospital. The Canadian government temporarily declared the maternity ward extraterritorial so that princess, so the princess would be Dutch by birth. The princess returned in 2002 to Ottawa for the festival's 50th anniversary. In 1946, Queen Juliana sent 20,500 bulbs requesting that they be displayed at the hospital. She promised to send 10,000 more each year. Isn't that one just divine? There was one year where we had very bad wind, and by the time the official opening of the tulips came about, it, it was just devastating to the ones at Dow's Lake. There weren't many left, unfortunately, that looked as nice as this. And then we also had the cold weather, so a lot of the bulbs didn't open, and I think that might have been last year, and a lot of them opened up after or just as the Tulip Festival was ending. So the weather can really play havoc with this one festival. But I thought it was quite nice to have the different perspective with the light in regards to how it hits the tulips. Unfortunately, none of these, I took pictures of, I didn't take pictures of the nameplates. In front of each of the sections, there will be a little plate there telling you what type of tulip it is. These are beautiful, such a deep, deep purple. And it's, it is amazing to see. Oh, these are, why did I take pictures of buildings? I don't know. But some of the spots at Dells Lake, you'll see on postcards. It's just the iconic stretch of color of tulips. It's amazing. Of 
quite beautiful. Performers at the festival include and include now these ones are going back and at that time there was a charge for these concerts Liberace in 1972 Alanis Morissette her first appearance at 12 years old in 1987 the trues I really don't know who they are in 2003 see here just a sea of tulips and General Rudy a Montreal based performer in 2000 in 2006 the festival was on the brink of bankruptcy due to inclement weather on weekends of the festival for several years at this time, the outdoor concert were, concerts were discontinued. In 2007, there was a reorganization with new leadership. Also, fundraising began for the organization known as War Child Canada. It is a fund to help children in war-torn countries. There is a theme to the festival each year. Seymour Colby of the Royal Horticultural Society donated 83,000 bulbs between 1941 and 1943. Isn't that beautiful? Let me find some from the day pictures. Okay, I had to go back to 2014. Now this here is one of the it's all chicken wire with the moss put on it they also have reenactors there there you go and we have these giant tulips that are placed throughout Preston Street which is little Italy and a few other spots in the city that artists paint this one happens to be I believe on this side it was the mayor the engagement on this side that might be you know it's the engagement of William and Kate and then that one all different That's supposed to be Parliament Hill. So obviously this was for the 60th anniversary. They do have tulips up on the hill, but we've never gone to see them. We always go to Dow's Lake. Although we have gone to Lansdowne Park a couple of years ago. You can see just the transition they do have certain spots within well not directly right inside where the tulips are but it'll tell you that this is a good spot to take your picture and of course there's always tons of people there wanting to take their picture so that's why it's good to go during the week so that you can actually get in that spot this year they ha that year they had looks like a cheerleading squad a friend of ours her daughter sang at uh, the tulip festival don't know that gentleman those aren't tulips but they also have daffodils and there are of course the foliage back here that have some beautiful flowers I, that looks like the lantern my dad had Looks like this is to celebrate the liberation of the Netherlands, I believe. And we ended up meeting through where we were working a gentleman who is affiliated with this. Very nice gentleman. 
They have the 1940s music going. And logs. Ottawa was known as a lumber town, which I never knew that myself. The Pope. You can see all, all the different ones. Some of them are very stunning. Uh, not all of them are painted. Some of them actually had pictures that were photocopied and cut out and pasted onto them. That like teacup. They're really very cute. As to what happens to those figurines, I'm guessing they were just taken apart. Me being artistic. I really like to get very close to my subject when I'm taking photos. I guess that was of the sky. Anyways, back here. Okay. The Netherlands continues to send bulbs to Canada. 10,000 from their royal family. 10,000 from the Dutch Bulb Growers Association. Today, nearly 3 million are purchased from Dutch and Canadian growers. So that was a quick one there. This gentleman, this stuff is amazing. He puts the paint and then with that tool, he moves it through. And you have to stand away from his table. There you can see. And then he puts the paper. Oh, I didn't, he didn't turn it so I could get it, but it's a really nice, it's beautiful. It's a, of course, tulips. Okay. Oh, ladybug. Let's see. Okay. I have some time, so I figure I would talk to you about a great thing to do if you're here. And this is from Mackenzie King Estates. Oh, that's blurry. This is inside the cottage where his parents stayed. That would be Mackenzie King, our former prime minister. Now, you have heard me mention this in my personal experiences, my paranormal personal experiences. So that would be worth going back and checking out. Now, the Haunted Walk of Ottawa. Glenn Shackleton is the founder of the Haunted Walk, Inc. In 1995, he began the Haunted Walk in Kingston. In 1996, Ottawa, and in 2013, in Toronto. He is the past president of the Bytown Museum and was on the board of directors for tourism and the historical society. In 2010, he topped, he was on the top 40 under 40 in the Ottawa business journal. This is Canada's largest walking tour company. He has 70 guides over the three locations. A half a million people have experienced the haunted walks. Some of these are a little out of focus. So sorry. I think these pictures were from at least three years ago. 25 years of the haunted walks will be celebrated in 2020. That would be of the Kingston. Now, Glenn was a history student at Queen's University. And spending time in England, his experiences on ghost walks in New York gave him the idea. P. 
people would hear ghost stories and learn some history of the city. He thought that was superb. His brother, his now wife, then girlfriend, helped him on the first tours that he offered in Kingston. And an article in a newspaper assisted the walk in gaining popularity. And that's a cutout of a maid scared the heck out of me when I seen it there. Hopefully, this is the main cottage. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. And these are tables in that from the tea room that's there. Uh, I'll, I'll be going... We'll be going back this coming summer, and I can get better pictures. Now, in this room in the main cottage, there is the sound of a typewriter that's triggered when someone goes into the room. When I heard it this year, I thought, what the? And then I said to our friend Mel, I said, did you? And she said, yes. I went, oh, okay. Just wanted to make sure. Okay, now Glenn has written books on the stories told on the walks in Kingston and Ottawa, and I am impatiently waiting for one from Toronto. One of his favorite stories is from the Teachers College in Ottawa. The distillery district in Toronto is a credible haunting, as well as the hauntings at the Ottawa Jail Hostel. He himself, Glenn himself, has seen a spirit at Fort Henry in Kingston, although it was at a distance. He has, although he hasn't seen many apparitions, he has had many other encounters of a spiritual kind. Believe it or not, he has gotten used to the haunted locations, although Fort Henry is still a location where he can be moved to run. And that's one of the group of seven paintings. I would believe it is probably a copy, although he could definitely have afforded one. This was a bed for his dog. I'll be talking more about Mackenzie King at another time. Isn't that beautiful? I have never been in the section that houses the tea house. Those are friends and family. And these are going to be really blurry because it was nighttime. But these are in what is called the ruins. I would like to go during the day so that I could get some better photos. And this blue, we're not sure... We think it, it may be just a reflection, not 100% on that, but uh, these were likely earlier, and one of these, I think it was in here, if you brought it in, that's actually a face, I think that was, Hubby found it. As I said, we have had experiences at this location before. And then this is walking into a little wooded area there. It is a, a beautiful spot, definitely a beautiful spot. The detail on the bed. Now, these must be hubbies. So all of this, the beds, the linens and all that, to my understanding, it is all from his time frame. It is his, definitely. And he, oh, now I'm going into more about him. Okay, let's get back to the haunted walk. Because he's a very interesting character. Okay, the Ottawa Jail host Hostel was the most difficult to research due to privacy laws. In other cases, history predates Canada's Confederation, 
so records were not kept well. All stories are researched to the best of their ability. They are respectful in regards to every story they tell. Glenn no longer guides tours himself. He wanted the business to grow and realized he needed guides. When he did guide tours, his excitement in sharing with the people on the tour would keep him awake at least two hours after he'd get home. And this is one of the guides. All of the guides have a black cloak and they carry a lantern. So when you're here in Ottawa, in the evenings, early evenings, it wouldn't, it's just a regular thing to see them going along the streets on their tour path with a whole bunch of people following behind them. That we're not sure might have been a leaf not a hundred percent and then we're back to the beginning hang on okay now i chose this photo because this is not in any other picture before or after so i believe that's what they would call ecto this was taken way back when i first came here this is the gallows where the bodies would drop. These are the cells on the top floor. And they keep a rope there. And then that would just, and down you go. And those are the back stairs. This is the open, the entrance to the jail hostel. Okay, some stories do change because of new or continuing information in regards to the hauntings. They do add new stories to the tour as well as new tours whenever possible. In some cases, new stories will replace old. Now there are quite a few different walks you can go on. First, uh, one of them is the haunting at Laurier House which is still being offered. Ghost in the Gallows, Haunted Jail Tour. Hubby and I have been on that 11 times. All in total, we've been on 18 tours. The original Haunted Walk of Ottawa. Crime and Punishment Historical Jail Tour. The Haunted Walk Experience at Upper Canada Village. Mackenzie King Estates. Ghost in Gallows, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Halloween only. The Premium, the original Walk of Ottawa, that is the museum experience in Halloween only. Premium Ghost and Gallows, Halloween season only. Haunted Walk, the incident at, incident at the bunker, that's the Defen Bunker, Canada's Cold War Museum. It's the zombie adventure, that's October. The Haunted Walk's Nightmare Before and After Xmas, December only. A Night on Death Row, Halloween season only. Canada's Scariest Ghost Stories, this is during the summer. Stranger Tales, A Haunted Walk City Adventure, October and November. We Aren't Afraid of No Ghosts, A Haunted Walk Kids Adventure. The Great Ghost Family Adventure, that's July and August. And Whelan's Night. Special Ghost and Gallows Tour. This is on the anniversary of John Whelan's death. And the Time Travel Adventure, that's May and October. You can find information on the Haunted Walk on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and also on their website. That's at hauntedwalk.com. And the phone numbers... For Kingston office, 613-549-6366. Ottawa is 613-232-0344. And for Toronto, 416-238-1473. If you come to Ottawa, I strongly advise that you take one of these tours. Their guides are superb and telling the stories. They get right into it. It is well worth it. 
The prices are also listed on their website. And there's more detailed information in regards to each of these tours that I have mentioned. But definitely a must do if you come here or you go to Kingston or you visit Toronto. Now, thank you again to all my loyal subscribers for coming by for these two special events here. Although this one is, of course, more constant, but um, yes, thank you for dropping by. And for anyone who is coming through just to see what's what, take a look at some of my other videos. As I mentioned, my own personal haunted experiences at these locations, you can find them there. And um, if you think someone else would be interested, share it out by all means. Give me a thumbs up if you like them. And comment. I always get back to my comments. Think of subscribing. And if you want to, that would be fabulous. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when I upload. So have a great rest. Rest. Have a great rest of the evening and have a terrific Thursday until tomorrow night I don't know which one that I'll be giving you facts on but we'll have to wait and see until then ciao for now